This is a review of the Signal Corps Frequency Meter BC221AH. It's in a rather battered box, but I expect it's had a hard life. If we open up the lid, we'll see what it actually consists of. What we have done is connected the power supply up to the back, so it would run on batteries. That's one of the options there, but we're going to be running it off a main supply. So if we open up, that is what the Thing looks like it looks very similar to the LM13 uh, frequency meter. Uh, interesting to see that it was last moisture and fungus proofed in September 1944. So I very much doubt if it's actually seen any repairs, adjustments, or anything since that time, and it seems to work remarkably well. So what we'll do now is we'll turn it on. So that's come on. For anybody is familiar with the LM13, may have had a look at our review of that because we also have that video of that you'll see it looks very similar but there are differences between them um, let's plug the headphones in here this is we'll be using to check it out these two parts are exactly the same as the LM13 the, the hundreds dial and the units dial and the vernier scale on the top there's a corrector which is the same as the LM13 over here and the frequency band low and high that point it stops everything is different after that um, antenna connected to that which we will take that it's loosely coupled to the uh, antenna obviously on your transmitter or your receiver um, the gain is actually the gain for the headphones this is this has nothing to do with the um, it doesn't have an RF output adjustment like the LM13 um, likewise the switch here is for instead of just having a crystal on and off we have the crystal check crystal only and the heterodyne oscillator on its own as well so what we'll do is we'll have a look and we'll set up a, a typical scenario uh, and check it right way through inside here it says a calibration book inside now this one didn't have a very good calibration book and it needed revamping shall we say because it was in such a terrible state so this lot took a little while to do but we have it have at least the very important figures we need in order to use it um, so okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide on uh, a frequency to look for on the receiver. Now there is no crystal calibration point to 3.7 meg, so we actually have there's the piece of paper with it. The closest we can come to it is 3.5 meg, which is down there under crystal calibration points. So what we're going to do is we're going to set initially the variable part of it up to 3.5 and cross check it with the crystal now if we take the actual sheet we take another sheet this is fun isn't it um, frequency kilohertz 3500 that is what we want to check with the crystal so according to that 3500 needs dial units 3359.8 now 3359.8 is what we need to now set up on the front panel. I will go through this slowly for anybody unfamiliar with this sort of arrangement. Um, we have four figures and a decimal point, which is 3359.8. The 33 will be setting up on this. The 59 will be setting up on this dial here and the 0.8 using this vernier here. So straight away we want 33. So we'll Wind that round to 33, 30, no, we come up to the naught, 30, 31, 32, 33. So that's 3300 0, 0 at the moment, but we want 3359.8, so it's 33, 59 is there, coming to the arrow, yeah. And the 0.8 we find with the vernier. So if we turn that up to there until that the eighth mark round five, six, seven, eight lines up with a mark, which is that one there. So that's five um that's three three five nine point eight is at that point. Five, six, seven, eight, and you can see that one is lining up perfectly with the line and doesn't matter what the number is on there. It has to be one of those is lining up with one of the outer ones with one of the inner ones and eight is the one we want. So that's it. Three three five nine point eight. Now 
that is the um, variable one set. So what we we know there's a crystal um, frequency that matches that. So if you put that on crystal check, we can hear a tone. I hope we can hear the tone. And what we do, that should be exactly the same as the oscillator. It's not exactly the same. So we correct it with the corrector up here. Let's go have a look at the corrector. What we've done is we have one beating against the other. In other words, they are both now exactly the same. So we can be pretty sure that that is 3359.8 which is 3.5 megahertz. So what we do is we mustn't touch the corrector again because that is now set up and what we need to do now is adjust uh, the oscillator portion here to our 3.7 meg. Here we have the sheet from the book which actually gives us 3.7 meg. You can see it here, 3700. The dial units we need to set up for that is 3748.0. So what we now do is we're going to change the dial to read that and then we know we're on that frequency and we'll check and see if we can find that on the receiver. 3748 it is. 35, 36, 37 and 48, 30, 40, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. There are no units, sorry, no tenths. So it's straight 35, 36, 37, 48. Okay, what we need to do now is we need to connect the aerial up to here. And that's the aerial, and that is loosely coupled to the receiver. So let's go over to the receiver. Okay, we want 3.7. This is 3.5 here, so that's 3.4. So, 35, let's turn up the volume. 35, 36. Oh, a bit early. So that's, that's it's a bit before 37, you can see. Now, the BC221 does not have a modulator on it, therefore we're just hearing the carrier. But if we use the beat frequency oscillator on the, this receiver, and turn it down a bit, There you go. So in fact our dial calibration is a little bit out there as you can see. But uh, that's our 3.7 meg. Okay, so if anybody wants to see, let's go through it again with a different value if you're not sure or just want to see us go through it. But this time I won't stop, I'll keep going, but I'll explain what I'm doing. Now we won't go through the sheets. I've taken the figures off the sheets already to save us going through those. Um, but what we'll do is we'll pick a different frequency completely. Let's have 5.4 megacycles. That's quite a little way from our oh, 3.7, so we'll do that. Now, first of all, we need to obviously check the crystal. We've put the crystal check on, and the value we want on the dial is 1888. So we need to go, first and foremost, we've got to 18. That's 18 there. Then we want 88 on here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 80. Five, six, seven, eight. Not particularly loud, this one. That's... There you go, that's that. So that's the crystal checked on the corrector there. So we turn this over here. Now we want the actual frequency we want, which is 5.4 megs. And 5.4 megs is 17.86 8. So we need to go back up there. So that's 15, that 17 is there. 15, 16, 17, and we want 86. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 5, 6, 7, 88. Um, 0.8 on that, so we need to take that through. 
Right, now that one is lining up with that, which gives us 0.8. So once again, that's 17, 86, 86, 17, 86, 0.8. Now let's go and have a look at the receiver. Okay, we're looking for 5.4 meg on the scale. As 5.5 is where the orange joins the blue, to 5.4 is just this side of it. So let's move through. We've left the beat frequency oscillator on here, so we'll have it really loud than the speaker when we, we hit that frequency. 4.5, 4, 6, 4, 7, 4, 8, 4, 9, 5. 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4. And that's it. There we go, I'll turn that off so it doesn't shout us down. Quite close, and that was straight from the frequency meter, 5.4 meg. Not too bad. Well, that's our conclusion of a quick test of the BC221 and explaining what it does and what it's capable of. Hope you learned something from that. Thanks for watching.